Welcome to Economics 4.3. Uh, we're going to talk about monopolistic competition and oligopolies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a word, oligopoly. Um, when we talk about monopolistic competition, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this picture here. Genes are an example of monopolistic competition. Genes are genes. I mean, come on, they are. But are there variations? You can see here, we have variations in color, variation in washes. Are there holes? Are they skinny? Are they bell-bottom? Are they loose? Um, they have slight differences in them that make them unique, but they're still the same thing. They're genes. So we're going to talk about uh, characteristics, and I already gave you one example of monopolistic competition. Uh, how firms compete without having to necessarily lower their prices, like in uh, pure competition. Um, how monopolistically competitive markets are going to set their output, how much they produce. And then we're going to talk about oligopolies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, say that five times real fast. Oligopoly, 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 oligopoly. Ooh, that was hard. Um, but monopolistic competition, this is a market structure in which many companies sell products that are similar but not identical. Jeans. Jeans are a great example. So we differentiate. And this is when we make a product different from other similar products. Sometimes it's nothing more than having the, you know, Izod logo or the Polo logo or what is it, Vineyard Vines or I don't know. There's so many nowadays. Uh, just having that name brand on, on the shirt can uh, differentiate it from another one. Now, one way that uh, businesses that are in monopolistic competition uh, attract customers would be through non-price competition. Um, you know, do you like the style? Like me, I have a certain brand of jeans that I have to buy and I don't have to alter because I'm short. They offer them in short lengths. Um, curvy versus straight. Uh, location. I might pay a little more if it's right down the street from me versus driving two hours away. Uh, some things that, that can uh, attract customers other than a low price. Some people go to say Walgreens versus Walmart if it's one or two things because they don't want to uh, deal with the crowd but they know they're going to pay a higher price. Now what is an oligopoly? An oligopoly is a, a monopolistic competition. However, uh, you've got few large firms dominating the market. So you got a couple. When I think of this, I think of the tennis shoe industry. Like we've got some big players, Nike, Adidas. Um, another example would be uh, gaming systems. You've got Nintendo, uh, Xbox, and PlayStation. There are many others, but like those are the big three. Yeah, big three gaming systems. Cell phones could be another one. What are the big two? iPhone, Samsung. Right there. Uh, price war. This would be a series of competitive price cuts that lower the market price below production costs. So if it costs you $10 to make a product and you're selling it for eight, you're taking a loss. And companies will have this price war sometimes because they'll weed out some of the competition. Because if you can't, sell below cost and survive, you're gonna get out of the market. Now collusion, this is an illegal agreement among businesses to divide the market, set prices or limit production. Like what if all of a sudden the toilet uh, paper company said, we're gonna limit, let's only manufacture this much toilet paper, ha ha, and see how they run and fight for it. That'd be collusion, that'd be illegal. Uh, price fixing. Uh, this would be an agreement among businesses to charge one price for the same good. Uh, you know, maybe if everybody got together and there's a suggested retail price. Now, cartel. How many of you were thinking, ooh, drug cartel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the first thing I think of because that's what you hear in the news. Uh, and a cartel is a formal organization of producers that agree to coordinate prices in production. So it makes sense if you thought drug cartel because they organized producers and they coordinate prices and production and selling it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this could also be like if it was toilet paper. Toilet paper, they could get together, the producers of toilet paper, Charmin and Angelsoft and all those, and coordinate their prices and how much they're gonna produce. That'd be a toilet paper cartel. 
Um, so what are characteristics of monopolistic competition? Uh, you know, if you go to Walmart, very few of us expect to go when there's only like one product available. It's like if you're going for soap, toothpaste or paper towels, are you expecting there to be one bar of soap sold, one type of toothpaste or one type of paper towel? No, we have a variety, especially when you get into soap. They got different colors. They've got, you know, different brands and different smells. And like even within a brand, they have five or six options. It's crazy. Um, and producers find ways to make their products unique and attract to you. If you ever look at Secret Deodorant, Secret Deodorant was originally just marketed as a deodorant. It did sell. So then they turned around and marketed it, ooh, strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. They marketed it to women, and guess what? It took off. It's a big, even now, it's, that's a female deodorant. Really, a man can use it, but they marketed it just a little different, and, and it took off. That's how they, they attracted people. Um, when we have monopolistic competition, you can see, like here in the jeans, uh, jeans can vary by style, uh, color, size, and designer. So if we're selling in a monopoly, nothing changes. Color doesn't change. Size, style, no. Uh, prescription medication, you think it's, when you open that bottle, every, every one of the pills looks the same. But jeans can come in a variety. Like here you see white jeans or cream jeans. I don't know. They, they come in, like especially for girls, they come in lots of different colors too. Here is some orange juice. And you can see the prices go from $3.99 up to $4.59, which is the most expensive. So they're within 60 cents of each other, but you've got some that are pulp free. We've got some added calcium there, Swedish juice. Maybe they add a little more sugar. And so they're all the same prices. If one of those was priced at $10, and it was so out there, people be going, I'm not paying $10 when all the others are around $4. Now, we also have non-price competition, and, and these are ways to differentiate products uh, where you don't have to compete on price alone. Again, name brands, name brands. Uh, if you want that alligator, that Izod, or you want that polo, or, or that, uh, Gosh, I can't even think of the brand names now. But, you know, if you want to have that brand name, people are willing to pay more for a brand name sometime um, than to just to get the one with a lower price. And non-price competition, there's several forms. It can be location. This is a picture of Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. They sell expensive goods. And, like, supposedly that's like a shopping experience to go to Rodeo Drive. Uh, it really is. Now, um, under monopolistic competition, it's very, very similar to a pure competition, what we studied in 1.1. And let's look at how they compare. Both of them, you can see, there's many, many firms producing and selling the product. With a pure competition, everybody's selling the exact same product. Everything about it is alike. But in a monopolistic, like the jeans, there's slight variances. Now, in pure competition, there's no barriers to entry. Anybody can enter the market. But with monopolistic competition, you got some. They're not outrageous, but you do have some barriers to entry. It's low. Uh, however, in pure competition, there's no control over price. Zero. Zip. But in monopolistic competition, I do have a little control over price. Again, I'm going to go back to the jeans. I can't come out and all of a sudden make a $500 pair of jeans and expect people, you know, that shop at Old Navy to all of a sudden start buying my jeans. No, but I might could make some jeans and, and put a little bling on them or something and change them a little where someone would go, oh, well, I'll pay a little more for those. They fit me better. I like the way they fit. Another uh, non-price uh, that you can use would be celebrity endorsements. This is Elizabeth Taylor, and she had several perfumes uh, that she endorsed. I believe this one was Passion, maybe, uh, and people wanted to buy it. Elizabeth Taylor said it was her. She picked it out, and they wanted it. Uh, I also think of Nike 
And when Michael Jordan endorsed the Air Jordan, oh my gosh, their shoes like went through the roof. Everybody wanted a pair of Air Jordans. And they were willing to pay more for Air Jordans because they were Air Jordans. Um, now let's talk about an oligopoly. So an oligopoly is where the market is dominated by just a few large profitable firms. It really looks like an imperfect form of monopoly. Um, and to be considered an oligopoly, the, the four largest firms have to produce 70 to 80% of the output. Now let's look at some examples. Um, here, this, these would be music companies. You've got Universal, Sony, and Warner. They're the top three, and they've got 70 to 80% of the market, and everybody else is there in that green, that 19.2. Mm -hmm. Another one, gaming. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, like you ask people, oh, are you an Xbox or are you a PlayStation person? And every now and then you get somebody that goes, I have a, I have a Wii. Now, it used to be the Wii, and everybody's like, really? Now they've come out with the, uh, the Nintendo Switch, and now that's becoming a big one again. Um, but yeah, it, there's a few, but there's so many gaming systems out there that, that aren't an Xbox or a PlayStation or a Nintendo, but it's dominated by those three. And that is the end of 4.3. Hope you had fun learning about monopolistic competition and oligopolies. Again, try to say that five times and I will see you for the next lesson. Have fun.